So let's have a look at how to create a festive greeting card in Affinity Publisher. We'll do this in a number of steps and the things you'll need um, are the graphics files available from my website as usual and the address is in the description to the video. There's Fox with Winter Flowers, the Adora Bell script, a paper texture and a handmade texture. Now I'm going to step through creating a single card design complete with typography, colour, graphics and texture. By the end of the tutorial you'll have a ready to print 5 by 7 inch greeting card. Now that's a standard size and that'll, that will fit into a standard A7 envelope 5 and a quarter by 7 and a quarter which you can find in any good stationery store. And the paper cards you'll find 5 by 7 as a standard size for um, the photo printing paper that you can use in inkjet printers. Now aside from having access to Affinity Publisher and Affinity Designer you'll also need to download those following graphics and fonts to create the design and as I said you'll find them on my website. And of course you can use your own. Now to set up the layout we're going to set up a preset that you can use and come back to any time you like. So open up Affinity Publisher and go to File, New, My Presets and select the A7 preset. Now I'm using this one because it's a familiar name, A7. But from the drop down menu set the width to 177.8mm and the height to 127mm. No facing page. Set the margins to 12mm and add a bleed of 3mm. Set the any other options as shown in the uh, image to the right. Now name the custom preset to US Postcard and click to create the new document. Now you know how to do that. Once you've got all the, um, I the measurements input there, click on the plus sign right at the top and it will create a preset called Unnamed. So right click on that preset, the little image in the left hand side, and rename it to US Postcard A7, which is what I've got. Then when you click on that again, it will put the name next to the plus sign in the right hand side. So you know you're working on the right preset. It's a bit of a preamble, but then it's set up and it's there for good. The steps are exactly the same on a PC or a Mac. It doesn't matter which one you're using. That's the, that's the good thing about Affinity Publisher. In fact, all the Affinity pa packages, they work equally well on one or the other. Now, adding the first layer. Select the Layers panel and select Add Layer. That's that little faint page down the bottom. Rename the layer to Paper. It's always a good idea to name your layers so you can keep track of what you've got in them. Create a further four layers by the same method and name those background, typography, graphics and texture in that order. For now lock all the layers except the bottom layer called paper and click on the paper layer to activate it. You can see over the right hand side there I've got the texture layer is activated. That's the one that's highlighted. Click on the paper layer to highlight it and that will be selected. Place a picture frame on the paper layer. Make sure it's the exact same size as the layer with bleed. Also that the XY offset matches. That is minus 3 by minus 3 the XY size. Um, those measurements tell you that it's fitting exactly on the page. Go to File, Place and choose the paper texture image that you've previously downloaded and select it. It will fill the layer and look something like this. Now believe it or not there is a paper layer on there and you can probably faintly see what would look like slightly smudged paper. Lock the paper layer and unlock the layer above, the background layer. Expand the swatches panel and add a new swatch. Name the swatch card swatches. Now open the Color Studio and set the fill to 73, 60, 23, 48 and then select Add Current Fill to Palette over there 
and that will put in a fill um, ready for your use in the swatches palette in the card swatches now if you look closely you'll see there's a dark blue little square just below the white square of card swatches um, right click on that I don't mention it here but right click on that and rename it to navy it's a navy blue now create a rectangle using the rectangle tool extending it up to the bleed on all sides except at the top simply extend it to the edge of the trim of the page now from the swatches panel click the set fill to the rectangle to navy so that the the rectangle you've just typed in will be a navy color that color from the swatches panel and there you go select the rectangle and reduce the opacity to about 50 percent adjust this to what you think is suitable this will bring through some of the paper texture sitting on the layer below now I haven't reduced the opacity quite enough there uh, you might you might even have to take it down to about 10 percent um, it depends on on your preferences really Now, return to the Layers panel and lock the background layer. Unlock the next layer up, the one called Typography. Take the Type tool and drag onto the page to create a text frame and type in the word TIS. A very odd word, but that's, you can see, does make sense with the rest of it there. Highlight the text and set the font to Adorable Regular 120 point. Copy and paste twice the first text layer and enter V and season in the next two layers and you can see on the right hand side there how that works out typography and below it is tis the season there's three rectangles there now you can use a text frame or artistic text for this it really is your choice whichever you're more comfortable with once you're happy with how the type is arranged sex select all three text frames bit of a tongue twister there then head up to layers and convert to curves that converts all of those letters <coughs> to curves that way you don't have to transport the font with your document now selecting all three layers still right click and select group that groups all the layers into one group now you can scale the text as a whole unit with more flexibility. Enlarge the text so that the text extends up to the top margin and bottom margin of the page. Page margins, mind you, not the whole page. Center the group as well, and you can do this with snapping turned on, and you'll see the little green line which indicates you're on the center there. And that makes that centering very easy. Now return to the swatches panel and with the group selected select add current fill to palette. As your text is black it adds that. Right click on that color in the palette and select edit. Set the levels to 12, 9, 4 and 0 and rename it to ice. Your text changes to the ice color. You can see in there that you've now got two colors in the swatches panel. And you can do it this way or you can do it the other way you there is a multitude of choices for setting colors in the swatches panel just like everything else with affinity there is always more than one way of doing this now with no layers selected you can set the fill to no color that's up the top left hand corner of your screen return to the swatches panel and add a new fill right click and select edit set the levels to 086720 and name it red berry you can see how easy that is to do that add three more swatch colors from the colors no color to the following mint forest green and amber although it doesn't look a lot like amber to me but that's what it's called lock up the typography layer and unlock the next layer up called graphics now adding foliage graphics to your layout 
This is a little different. Open up the Fox with Winter Flowers EPS file in Affinity Designer. Select individual elements of the vector that form an object. And you can see on the right hand side of that image there are a lot of vector layers that form that little uh, flower that I've got selected there. Isolate a simple silhouette of foliage such as a branch and copy it. Return to your publisher document and lock the typography layer, unlock the next layer up, graphics, so graphics is unlocked, and edit and paste the selected vector onto the card layer. You can adjust the size and rotation of the vector and position in a blank area of the card. Adjust the fill of the vector from the swatches panel to one of your new swatches, such as red berry or berry red, or if you like, leave it the same colour. You can make it whatever colour you like by tapping the swatches panel, appropriate colour in the swatches panel. Now head back to the Affinity Designer vector and continue to copy paste individual foliage silhouettes. It can be a bit of a pain to do this, but persevere with it and you will eventually get it right. Return to the publisher document and edit paste adjusting the colours of individual images as you go. And you can see, rather than having them all expanded, I've got each of the different little foliage items there grouped into their own little special groups under graphics. Makes them easy to move around and copy and paste. <coughs> Persevere with that. It can be a little time consuming and it's a bit, of a, it's a bit awkward to do, but you will get it in the end. Now we need to match the colour of the overlay texture to the navy background of the card to make it appear seamless. To do this we can easily save the colours used in the publisher document as a swatch file and transfer this over to Designer ready for use on the texture graphic. Remaining in Publisher for now, go to the swatches panel we created and export the swatches. Click on save to export the swatches file. You will, you, you will probably want to use this later, but for now, you won't need to. Save and minimise the Affinity Publisher document for now, and we'll come back to it again soon. At the moment, I have to convert the texture file to an EPS file by tracing. As none of the Affinity packages do this yet, I've converted the texture for you and called it texture9vectorized.eps and that's the one we can use for now. Now I've created two of them. One is this one which is navy but I didn't name it navy vectorized and I created another one called ice vectorized. They're both in the download pack that's on my website. So let's skip to the next step as I've done all this conversion for you in Designer. Return to your Affinity Publisher document and lock the graphics layer. Unlock the top layer, Texture. Use the Picture Frame tool to create a new image frame that extends across the whole navy area of the card. File and Place and select your saved EPS texture image and open it. Allow the texture to fill the whole frame. Double click inside the frame to directly select it and scale it until you're satisfied with the result if it hasn't automatically scaled itself. Reduce the opacity to about 50%. And there we have it. The front of your card is finished and it's looking great. Awesome work. So now we need to set up the card ready for printing and folding. This means we need to adjust the page size so that the card has a complete front and reverse side and add another page to the project for the inside of the card as well. Now expand the card into a foldable design. Select all layers on the page and unlock them all. We want to double the height of the card to allow it to fold along the top edge. To do this, go to File, Spread Setup and enter 254mm into the Height text box. If in doubt, check or modify the master A page. 
Unlock all the layers and select everything on the page. Move all the elements down until the bottom of the navy background meets the bottom bleed edge. And you can see that there. Now pull a guide down from the top ruler to uh, the Y point of 127 millimeters. This should hit the top of the navy background. Extend the paper images frame up to the edge of the top bleed, resizing the paper image to fill the larger frame. You can see that the paper image covers the whole double sided frame there. Lock all layers except the background and select and edit copy the navy background. Edit and paste the coloured rectangle and manoeuvre it to the top of the page within the bottom edge meeting the top edge of the navy background. So you can see it's a join from the navy to the red there at the halfway point of the card. Adjust the fill of that top rectangle to bury red. This will be the outside of your card with the red as the reverse side. Now all we need to do is create the inside page. Lots of steps in this exercise as I mentioned but we're nearly finished. Create a duplicate of the page. Now page 2 of your document. Double click on the page 2 icon to bring up the page on the screen. And there you have it. You've got page 1 and page 2 and at the moment they both look the same. Double click on the page 2 icon to bring up the page on screen. Unlock the texture, graphics and typography layers and lock the background layer. Select everything on the page and delete it. Don't delete the layers, just everything on the layers. Just the contents of the layers. And it looks like that. Unlock the background layer and delete the navy rectangle. Select the red rectangle and adjust the fill to ice. So you've got the paper layer on the bottom there now and the ice layer on the top. Extend the pale grey rectangle, that's the paper layer, down until it meets the edge of the bottom bleed. Zoom into the lower half of the page and you can judge where the card will be folded from the guide sitting in the centre of the page. Take the type tool and drag onto the centre of the lower half of the page to create a small text frame or you can use artistic text. Type in Merry and set the font to adorable size 43 font colour to navy. Now edit, copy and edit paste the text frame and do this a couple of times editing the text to read Christmas and increase the font size to 50 points. Now edit and paste further text frames setting each word and best wishes for and 2017. Well I've got 2021. In its own text frame. Adjust the font size. Where I got 2017 from I don't know. In its own text frame, adjust the font size and position of each frame to create a nice calligraphy effect. Lock all layers and now unlock the top layer. Texture, the texture layer. Then file and place and choose the new grey texture image, the one I created for you. Texture 9, ice, vectorized EPS and select it. Reduce the image opacity to about 35%. You need to be able to see through it. Now export your artwork ready for printing. If you're simply printing your cards from home you can head up to file print and print the design directly from there making sure to print the card on both sides. You print one side, then turn the paper over, print the other side. Use pre-sized photo quality paper in your inkjet printer and 5x7 is a standard size. If you're sending your cards off to be professionally printed, you'll have to export your artwork as a print ready PDF file first and here's how you do that. File and save your artwork, then go to File, Export, choose PDF, press Ready 
from the Format drop-down menu. Check all printer's marks in the More option and in this front option include bleed settings. Now I've got preview export when complete just so that it comes up. If it comes up and says if you have pre-flight on, if it says there's errors there, just have a quick look but there are a few things you can't fix so just ignore that. Then click export to create your print ready file. Your PDF will be saved in the location you selected. Now you can send this straight off to the printers and choose whether you'd like your design printed on matte or gloss coated paper. Your printer can provide advice and pre-press proofs before committing to the final print job. Your finished greeting card, congratulations! You've finished your holiday cards and now it's time to pop them in the post. That's the end. Thank you for watching.